new information and development coming in this Israel-Palestine war. Of these terrorist groups, if they have those kinds of weapons in their hands. What weapons did they use and where did they get them? The recent attack by Hamas on Israel, which killed hundreds of civilians and sparked a new round of violence in the Middle East, has raised questions about the role of foreign actors in the conflict. While many countries have condemned Hamas's actions and expressed support for Israel's right to self-defense, some major powers have remained silent or ambiguous. Russia and China, in particular, have refrained from openly criticizing Hamas or calling for an end to the hostilities. This has fueled speculation that Russia is either tacitly or actively supporting Hamas, or at least benefiting from the diversion of attention from the war in Ukraine. So is there any truth to this? And what are the implications for regional and global security? Join us as we discuss how Hamas has been spotted with Russian weapons. The recent attack was launched from the Gaza Strip, a small, densely populated area covering only 140 square miles or about 360 square kilometers. This territory is unique in its geography, bordered on two sides by Israel and on the third side by Egypt. Despite its proximity to the Mediterranean, it remains a region marked by poverty and limited resources. The situation in Gaza has been dire for almost 17 years. It all began when Hamas took control of the area, a development that prompted Israel and Egypt to impose strict blockades on the territory. This isolation continues to this day. Furthermore, Israel has maintained not only land, but also air and naval blockades around Gaza. They've also implemented a comprehensive surveillance network in the region. And so, in light of these circumstances, a fundamental question has been asked. How did Hamas manage to amass such a considerable stockpile of weaponry? This arsenal allowed them to orchestrate highly coordinated attacks, resulting in over 1,200 casualties in Israel and leaving thousands more injured. Meanwhile, Hamas has continuously launched rocket attacks on Israel. So where did Hamas get these weapons from? Recent reports reveal that Hamas has been using weapons from Russia, Iran, and North Korea, including modern systems like the Kornet anti-tank guided missiles. And this has fueled the presumption that Hamas has been preparing for a large-scale attack on Israel for a long time. The Kornet is a laser-guided missile that can penetrate up to 1,200 millimeters of armor, it has a range of up to 5.5 kilometers and can be fired from a tripod or a vehicle. It is considered one of the most advanced anti-tank weapons in the world and has been used by various armed groups in Syria, Iraq, Libya, and Yemen. Also, over 2,200 unguided rockets were used in the initial attacks on Israeli cities, according to Israeli officials. Additionally, there were numerous suicide drones and various portable weapons in the possession of militants. These included rocket-propelled grenades, anti-aircraft missiles, sniper rifles, and machine guns. Some of the equipment found are particularly interesting. For example, after the Hamas incursion from Gaza in June 2021, a video surfaced online showing a PG-7VR resumed tandem charge rocket-propelled grenade with an explosively formed penetrator. This is a special type of RPG that has two warheads, one to detonate the reactive armor of the target and another to pierce through the main armor with a metal slug. While this anti-tank grenade was introduced into service in the USSR in 1988, its spread was halted after the collapse of the Soviet Union. Furthermore, its service life is only 15 years. The fact that Russia supplied this uncommon common RPG-7 to the Middle East is evident in photos from Syria, where the PG-7 VR resume was seen in 2015. Once in Syria, it's very easy for these weapons to fall into the hands of various militarized groups and terrorist organizations. Some experts believe that Iran may have played a role in transferring these weapons to Hamas as part of its support for the group. There are also pictures that show groups of soldiers in a formation visibly operating a Cornet anti-tank guided missile. Notably, in 2011, Israel lodged an accusation against the Russian Federation asserting that this anti-tank system had been supplied to Hamas. The allegation stemmed from a Cornet missile striking a school bus. In addition to these incidents, Hamas also used older ATG-7 
GM systems like Faggot and Conkers. They have not introduced anything new in this regard. Furthermore, in addition to original Russian anti-tank systems, Hamas also used Iranian replicas of Russian weapons and North Korean Bulse-2 ATGMs. In addition to portable anti-tank weapons, Hamas militants have equipped themselves with man-portable air defense systems or man pads. The first sightings of these man pads date back to 2012, as documented by the Israel Defense Forces. During that period, there were suspicions that the Soviet Strela II had made its way into the Gaza Strip. Since then, there has been a significant increase in the number of man pads in the possession of militants. These man pads not only include the Strela II, but also more modern systems like the Russian Igla, which has a range of 6 kilometers and a maximum altitude of 3.5 kilometers. It is more accurate and resistant to countermeasures than the Strela II. The Chinese QW, which is a copy of the Igla with similar performance characteristics. It also has an Iranian version called the MISOG-1 and the North Korean HT-16 PGJ, which has a range of 5 kilometers and a maximum altitude of 4 kilometers. It is based on the Chinese QW and was seen in Syria before reaching Gaza. Hamas has also been seen using a variety of missiles, some of which are Iranian-made, such as the Fajr-3 and Fajr-5 and Syrian-manufactured M302 missiles. Another interesting development is the technological progress achieved by Palestinians in the manufacture of their own missile systems. In the past, their missiles appeared to be assembled from basic materials, resembling improvised devices. However, more recent missile designs show a remarkable transformation. They now resemble mass-produced weapons crafted with a higher degree of mechanization and the use of sophisticated machine tools. This suggests that they may have acquired advanced manufacturing capabilities possibly with external support or resources. It is clear that these are definitely not some made-in-garage missiles, unlike Mudabar-1 anti-aircraft missiles, which are improvised from old Soviet rockets and have a low success rate. The sophistication of these weapons raises intriguing questions about their origin, manufacturing, and distribution. It is possible that these weapons came through sea smuggling. Hamas has used boats and ships to smuggle weapons from Iran, Sudan, Libya, and other countries. In some cases, Israel has intercepted and seized these vessels, such as the Kareen A in 2002, the Frankop in 2009, and the Kloss C in 2014. However, some of the shipments may have escaped detection and reached Gaza. Hamas has also dug hundreds of tunnels under the border between Gaza and Egypt, which have been used to smuggle weapons, goods, and people. These tunnels have been a lifeline for Hamas, especially after the blockade imposed by Israel and Egypt in 2007. Israel had tried to destroy these tunnels with airstrikes and ground operations, but new ones are constantly being built. Hamas has also received weapons directly from its allies and supporters, such as Syria and Iran. These countries have provided provided Hamas with rockets, missiles, and technical assistance. For example, in 2019, Iran claimed that it had supplied Hamas with Fajr-5 missiles, which were used to target Tel Aviv. According to Bilal Saab, a senior fellow and director of the Defense and Security Program at the Middle East Institute in Washington, Hamas's tunnel infrastructure is still massive, despite Israel and Egypt regularly degrading it. Daniel Byman, a senior fellow with the Transnational Threats Project at the Center for Strategic and International Studies, also said Hamas has received arms from Iran smuggled into the Gaza Strip via tunnels. This often included longer-range systems. Israel has been trying to stop the smuggling of weapons and other goods through tunnels under the border between Gaza and Egypt for years. Israel considers the tunnels a threat to its security as they allow Hamas and other militant groups to obtain rockets, missiles, explosives, and other weapons that they use to attack Israel. Israel has frequently targeted the tunnels with airstrikes using precision-guided munitions or bunker buster bombs. Israel claims to have destroyed hundreds of tunnels over the years, but new ones are constantly being dug by smugglers. For example, in October 2023, the Israeli Defense Force IDF, bombed three Hamas armed smuggling tunnels in Gaza overnight and reported precise hits. Israel has also conducted ground operations to locate and destroy the tunnels using bulldozers, explosives, or flooding.
Israel has also demolished homes that harbored tunnels, as did some Palestinians who wanted to keep the tunnel economy under their control. For example, in 2014, during Operation Protective Edge, Israel launched a ground invasion of Gaza to destroy dozens of tunnels that Hamas used to infiltrate Israel and launch attacks. What do you think about this issue? Let us know in the comments section below.